Hi everyone, I'm John from Sophos and welcome to this short little demo. Uh, in this section what we'll be doing is looking at the XG firewall and we'll be looking specifically at some of the software defined networking capabilities of the XG firewall. We'll begin with looking at WAN interfaces and how they're created. Then we'll look at how we can use those selectively using failover rules. And then we'll go to more sophisticated capabilities of using those interfaces uh, with traffic weighting and with policy-based routing before we move on to looking at two different methods of branch office connectivity. Uh, we'll hop straight into it and we'll go into the XG's management console and we'll go straight down to the networking section. And here you can see that at the moment I have one in one interface configured on my XG firewall. And that means that all of my internet traffic is going to go out of that interface. But I've also got another connection here, a dark fiber connection. And what I'm going to do is hop into that and I'm going to change that into a WAN interface. And then what I need to do is define this gateway by name and also provide an IP address for the next hop of this. And what we'll see here is a little alert to say that because I'm adding a new WAN interface, that might cause some connectivity problems um, because I'm changing the way that the XG firewall connects to the internet. Um, now I save that down, then what we'll see when we go back to the uh, interfaces list is that we now have two WAN interfaces is configured and of course what that means is that we now need to start telling the XG how to handle these multiple different WAN connections. So that's done through the WAN link manager tab and I can hop in here and we can see that now we've got these two gateways set up and you can see their configuration by IP address that kind of thing. You can also see their status as well so one is green so it's up and the other one is red um, because it's down and that's just because it's a it's a dummy interface that I've just created for the purposes of this demo. Now what I can do is I can determine whether that particular interface is um, defined as active which it is at the moment or I can change it round to a backup interface and that will uh, kick into play according to certain circumstances like for example this active interface will come up if my main connection is down. Um, I've also got some options down here as well to edit those failover rules so instead of using the universal section we can have this interface kick in based on um, certain characteristics like in this case um, the ability to ping a particular IP address will help to determine if this interface is down. Now, if I turn this back to an active interface for a moment, you'll see that what I've got underneath is a waiting option. So I might choose to send my traffic on a 50-50 ratio between my two interfaces, or if they have uh, disparate connection speeds, then I might want to change that waiting so that we get more traffic going down one interface as opposed to another. So this is all about trying to use those interfaces as efficiently as possible. It's worth pausing here for a second as well to mention the fact that we can also deploy uh, cellular WAN services. So this needs a specific um, flexi port for our hardware devices. Uh, but once you've got that, it's, um, it's a fully configurable interface that you can set up and uh, use as potentially as a backup or even as a primary route out to the internet, particularly as uh, cellular services uh, improve in performance. Okay, so as well as basic failover options, uh, you can start to get a bit more sophisticated with your routing. So if we hop down to the routing tab, I'll show you what I mean. You can hop into the SD-WAN policy settings, and here you can create policies that are set up according to where the traffic is coming from, where it's going to, or the type of application that is in use. So let me show you some of the things that you can do with the SD-WAN um, policy routing. So we can give our routing uh, rule uh, and policy a name. So what we're going to do here is create an SD-WAN rule, which is specific to email. And we can select the uh, incoming interface. In this case, it's port one. We can define our source networks and our destination networks. And in this case, what I'm going to do is make this rule applicable to SMTP traffic. I could also make this applicable by application or by users and groups. And then lower down, I've got my routing. So I can choose to override the standard routing and force this traffic out of one particular interface. In this case, the one I've just created here, my gateway. And I can also define a backup gateway. So if the primary route fails, then this is my opportunity to send traffic down a different interface. What I can also do 
is I can grab this predefined object here, which is WAN load balance. So that's using all of the uh, outbound WANs according to the, the, the basic policy. So that will just go into a pot and be sent out to whichever WAN interface is optimal at the time, as opposed to forcing it down one particular route. So of course, a large part about SD-WAN is all about connecting branch offices. So now is a really good time to introduce the SD-RED product to you. Um, SD-RED is a small hardware appliance and it's designed to make it as easy as possible to connect in a branch office location. Uh, so what you do is you associate your um, SD-RED appliance with head office via its serial number. And then from there on, the SD-RED has all the information that it needs to build a secure tunnel back to headquarters. Quarters. And from then on, to all intents and purposes, everything you plug into the back of the SD Red is essentially popping out at head office. So you're taking that branch office and you're making it appear as if it's connected in uh, locally to the firewall at HQ. How you configure that? Well, the red is basically treated as another interface. So in order to set up a red, then you need to go into the interfaces section. And then we're going to add an interface in and of course the type of interface in this case is red. And this will take you through to a wizard to help you configure your newly purchased SD red product. And what you need to do is start out with giving your branch office a name and then telling the head office firewall what type of red appliance it is that you've purchased. So in this case, we're going to go for the SD Red 20, which is one of the newer range of appliances. Um, then we need to plumb in the serial number of our appliance, which you'll find stamped on the bottom of the appliance. And the tunnel ID is just a handle for our reference. And then what we need to do is tell the SD Red how to find HQ. So we can do that by IP address or by host name. And if we've got a secondary connection at head office, then we can also configure that just inside here as well. So that's where our backup interface would go. And then we can either configure this for automatic provisioning using our own centralized service, which is the easiest, or you can also provision via a USB stick. And then what we're doing is configuring how the tunnel operates. So in the standard unified mode, this works exactly as I described, whereby everything goes through the tunnel and comes out of head office for further processing. Um, and then what you're doing is connecting in that branch office to HQ. So in that instance, what you'll need is to configure a, an IP address and a subnet range for your newly connected network. So um, the IP address of the interface itself is entered just at the top. In this case, we're going to call this 10.10.10.1. And then we can add it to a zone. So I'm going to add it to the LAN zone because it's one of my internal networks. And I can also configure a DHCP server to run this interface if I want to. So uh, that will obviously dish out IP addresses to any devices that connect to that network. And then we can save that. And here's one I made earlier. So here you can see uh, a red that I've defined earlier on with the IP address details and uh, which zone it belongs to and all the information there uh, as required. So it's as easy as creating a local interface. Um, so it's very, very simple to hook in those branch office locations. Now, if your branch office is bigger, um, then you might want to have a full blown firewall at that location, in which case you can use our VPN technologies to connect to those branch office locations. So um, we offer a, a flexible range of VPN options, um, including both site to site and remote access VPN. So in this case, what we'll do is we'll look very quickly at how you can configure an IPsec connection to a branch office. So uh, first of all, uh, obviously, we need to give our policy a name. And then we need to configure the connection type. So in this case, we're going to go for site to site. We can also create a tunnel interface. Um, so this is um, passing a tunnel across the IP set connection and giving us more flexibility when it comes to doing things like routing. We can choose whether this uh, gateway is going to initiate the connection or not. And then we can choose the type of encryption. So we support IKE uh, v1 and IKE v2. 
and we can choose authentication using either a pre-shared key for simplicity or a certificate if we prefer. So we're going to go down the simple route and we're going to use a pre-shared key. And then we need to configure which end of the tunnel we're listening for and the address associated with that. It's worth mentioning that you can also use Sophos Central and our central management features to help you with the process of creating site-to-site -site VPNs between Sophos appliances, but we'll cover that in a different video. Um, so I hope you found this introduction to the software-defined networking capabilities of the XG Firewall useful. And um, don't forget to look out for some other videos uh, as well. So we have the, uh, the basics of the XG Firewall. Um, we also have a video looking at things like the web content filtering, the centralized management and the centralized reporting capabilities and the synchronized security capabilities that hook the firewall and the endpoint together. Um, but that is all for this session. So I hope you enjoyed and thank you for watching.